Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, different video today. We're gonna react to Are We Living in a Simulation by the channel Closer to Truth. I believe this is really an interesting topic to dive into because nowadays in the world that we live in, in a world of secularism removed from religion, you still see that people seek spirituality one way or another. And nowadays people worship science and they make science their God and therefore they come to conclusions such as, hey, maybe we live in a simulation, which is absolutely comical to me because if you make the statement that we are living in a simulation, you of course need a programmer to the simulation, which then would be God. Because what is a simulation? I don't think that anybody that proposes the idea of a simulation theory really believes that we are just on a laptop. Of course, they're talking about a much more complex simulation in the end. And therefore, you would need a much more complex programmer for it. Again, that would be God. This truly what we see nowadays, it is essentially a spiritual replacement therapy, if you will, people seeking in all kinds of directions, abandoning religion. As Muslims, we of course know that the cure to this is very, very simple. It is Islam, the worship of one God alone. But for the scientific mind, this is probably a little bit too simple. Anyways, guys, before we jump into the video, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support the channel. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Andre, the question, are we in this whole existence of ours living in a simulation, sounds like science fiction or some movie or just some fun, but there's some serious scientific probes that you've done with this to explore what we know. Uh, how do, how do, how do, why is this an interesting question? Well, uh, I'm not sure that I would formulate the question precisely like that, about living in a simulation, and a simulation means that somebody made the simulation, who did it? Uh, <laughs> Ooh, but there are God two forbid. Aspects of it. Yes, so this is absolutely hilarious. Of course, the scientist says right away that he would rephrase the question. He wants to talk about simulation theory, but at the same time, he doesn't want to call it a simulation because then you need an inventor, you need a programmer, you need God. And the scientists nowadays, unfortunately, hate God. I don't see a contradiction with being a scientist and being a religious person. But unfortunately, in this day and age, most people do. And therefore, the scientist has to rephrase, has to abstain here from the possibility of there being a God. When we're talking about creation of galaxies out of quantum fluctuations, we are talking about the real process or what? <laughs> what how do you interpret it? <coughs> Usually, we think that quantum mechanics applies to very tiny objects. But right now, when we're talking about this multiverse picture, self-reproducing eternal universe, etc., we see that the universe by itself could be created quantum mechanically. So small unsolved problems of quantum mechanics they actually apply to the biggest problems ever. Yeah, and there he said it himself. The universe might have been created quantum mechanically. First and foremost, nobody truly understands what quantum mechanics are. It is still a very new field in science, and therefore there has to be much more research done before we wrap our head around it even a little bit. Nobody can fully explain what quantum mechanics are and what they imply. But nevertheless, looking at quantum mechanics, he says it himself that it seems like there could be a possibility that this whole universe has been created quantum mechanically. 
But yet again, rewind, nobody understands what quantum mechanics are and therefore delete that part and simply say the universe has been created. About existence and the reality of our own universe. For example, we may say, oh, okay, so you are predicting us this multiverse and the quantum fluctuations and the galaxies produced by quantum fluctuations during inflation. But does it mean that inflation produced them and uh, at the moment when it produces, it's already to the right of you? <laughs> or it becomes to the right of you only when you first observe it? Mm. And the honest answer to this question, which I'm, well, trying to give when people really push me to the wall, is that everything is consistent with the assumption <laughs> that galaxies are there when we were there when we see them before we start looking. But that's a maximum which I can say. Yeah, the phenomena that he refers to there in quantum mechanics is that if there is no observer, certain objects are not there at all. They only appear when there is an observer. And therefore, if there is a multiverse, maybe it is only there once we observe it. It is similar to games, video games, ultimately. They do not render the world that you do not perceive. There is always a perceiver, the player, and when you enter another level, then you see it. Before that, it's not being generated in order to save capacity, in order to save power. But all of this, ultimately, no matter how scientific you want to make it, is fantasy. You have no proof whatsoever that there is a multiverse. You have absolutely no proof for those statements. But hey, nobody cares, right? All the science freaks, they will listen to this and say, Yes, please give me more. For them, scientists seem like enlightened prophets. But if you make a religious claim and you say, Yes, there is a creator to the creation. Show me the evidence. There is another aspect to the same question. Uh, uh, what if somebody really created our universe. Not that it was oh. created naturally, but somebody, well, used his mind and, well, whatever, and created it. Whatever. We, in fact, um, half seriously, I would not say completely seriously, but of half seriously uh, studied the possibility whether you can create the universe in a laboratory. A baby universe in the lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, that makes perfect Alan sense. Bruce. The arrogance of those people is absolutely unfathomable. It's insane. Hmm. Before we say that this universe can be created, first and foremost, we have to recreate it in the lab. And if we can do it, yeah, well, then it cannot be done. In the Quran, we read, O mankind, a parable has been set forth, so listen to it. Indeed, those whom you call upon, apart from Allah, shall never create a fly, even if they were to band together for that purpose. And if a fly snatches anything from them, they cannot recover it from it. Weak are the pursuer and the pursuit. So in this surah we read that people that invoke anything besides Allah, besides God, can't even create a fly. When we talk about invoking something besides Allah, most of the time we think idols, but anything can be an idol, especially in this modern day and age. Science can be your idol. And those people worship science rather than God. And now in their arrogance, they believe that if they cannot recreate the universe in a laboratory, yeah, well, then it cannot be done. Do you really believe that the creator of the universe is limited like yourself? That doesn't even make sense from a Darwinistic standpoint. You do believe in evolution, but at the same time you of course believe in multiverses and whatnot. You surely do not believe that you are the most advanced life form in the multiverse. Of course not. So why then do you propose that if you, mere human, cannot create a universe in a laboratory, God cannot do it? It is absolutely ridiculous, absolutely disgusting to listen to, honestly. But nevertheless, the Quran explains it the best, of course, because those people are not even capable to create a fly by themselves. And that is much, much deeper than you would think. Of course, now people will say, oh, well, we can clone it. Even if you can clone it, you take the building blocks from the creation that has previously been created already by the Almighty Creator. And what we, we did not find that it is possible, we did not find that it is impossible. It is still oh well. too complicated for us to really know whether it works or not. But at the uh -huh. time when I studied it, I decided to check. Well, okay, so suppose I create the universe in laboratory. Very difficult. 
very difficult, but maybe not impossible, because I can create the whole our universe could have been created from one milligram of matter. So I have this one milligram of matter, I have more, and I can just put it into some special condition, after which it will start expanding. Should I do it? If I do it, maybe it will expand on me and kill me, <laughs> and then I don't want to do it. Well, usually if you are creating inflationary universe, it's just like creating something like a mushroom, and here is a universe, and you observe only the neck of a mushroom, yeah. uh, and then it cuts out, so this universe just dispatches from your space. It is not expanding on you and killing you, hopefully. It's squeezed but, off yeah, into some other... Yeah, it just, well, it detached from mm -hmm. your space and it started expanding on its own. But then, if this is the case, why do I even care? Yeah. I create the universe, maybe I can use it, say, to take good minerals from it, <laughs> or take energy from it, or, well, or maybe jump there and live there, because our part of the universe, most probably, it will die, disappear one way or another. This is a separate issue. Honestly, as smart those people appear to somebody, potentially, those statements are extremely dumb. If you create a universe and then you want to jump into it because your universe will implode at some point, well, that would destroy the universe that you created as well. Super brain. But then maybe I'm scared, so I will jump to this universe and leave there. None of this is technologically feasible <laughs> for many different reasons. If I create the universe which is inflating, then the inflating universe wants to inflate away out of me, mm -hmm. does not let me go inside. Mm -hmm. I create it typically yeah, too small exactly. that I will not squeeze into this. Okay. <sighs> so He's I giving the answer without realizing it. Would, uh, the reason why it wouldn't work is because you find yourself in a universe, in a universe of matter, of time and space. And now you want to recreate the same thing within your universe. Why this would backfire onto you is because you are in the same position of time and space yet again. Therefore, you would need a creator outside of time and space. And now guess what religions have been telling you for thousands of years, especially Islam. Look into it. Islam says that the creator is outside of the creation. He is ultimately transcendent of time and space. Sounds logical. Predict energy conservation. So why then even bother? And the only reason which uh, came to my mind when I was thinking, why would I even care about this creation of the universe? Why God even care? Okay. <laughs> yeah, then, right. Uh, the only because God is a that, human, well, right? We are giving birth to our children. It does not make us immortal. But we arise them, we share with them our wisdom on the absence thereof. We tell them that this is what we know about life and please remember this and okay, don't do this. Can we send a message? It's very strange to me that this guy talks about a philosophical immortality, if you will, that you're giving your ideas to the children. You're a scientist, you believe in Darwinism yet again, so therefore you believe in your biology. Biologically speaking, you are making yourself immortal by giving your genes further into this creation. That's the only thing you can do. This is really what it boils down to from the atheistic mind. So you give your genetic material to your children. Those children give their genetic material to their children. This is immortality for the atheist. Why do you even talk about philosophical ideas when you don't believe in God? So when I was thinking about it, if it is inflationary universe, and you decide to write something on the surface of the universe we just created, then because the universe blows up to a normal scale, then the people who will live there for billions and billions of years will live just in the corner of one letter. And never so see So they it. will never see the whole scripture. <laughs> so then, can I send the message encoded in anything else? And the only idea which I was able to come with is the following. If I study all of this new models of theoretical physics like string theory, which we recently people have found that they may have 10 to the degree 500 or maybe more different vacuum states. Maybe I can create the universe by using all kinds of tricks, external fields, pressure, whatever, in some specially chosen vacuum state. And then the universe 
at least for a while, will be preserved in this state. Suppose that I create the universe where electron mass is equal to the proton mass, is equal to the mass of the W boson, is equal to the mass of X boson. All masses are the same. All coupling constants are the same. So this will be very easy to describe. Just one or two bits of information yeah, okay. and you describe your vacuum state. But suppose you create your universe in a very, very weird state, like electron is 2,000 times lighter than a proton, proton is 100 times lighter than W boson, W boson is, well, a billion or more times smaller than some uh, other particle, which is X boson, yeah. and this one is 100 times lighter than so-called Planckian mass, and all coupling constants are different, so it will require lots of wealth time and information to describe this vacuum state. Very complicated. Sounds yeah. familiar though. So, <laughs> if you create the universe in a complicated vacuum state for the description of which you can, you must need a lot of information, you can encode any message in this complicated information. If you want to say, uh, well, uh, send a message in binary code, you can describe by this binary code complicated properties of elementary particles. But now, you send this information encoded in the properties of elementary particles. So if it's complicated, the message can be lengthy. Yeah. Then, first of all, it looks like very much like our universe, yeah. with very bizarre relations between particle physics, particle masses, particle charges, coupling constants. Everything is so strange. There are some symmetries there. Many of them are broken. Why was it necessary to break all of these symmetries? Maybe to make this message long. <laughs> Second thing, then who can read this message of God who created us? Well, only physicists, because only physicists, they study yes, this coupling constant, The enlightened et prophets so it's of the new day and explains our importance in the well, <laughs> game of things. And then the last part is that God this, loves this physicists. would mean that our world have been created not by a divine being, but by a physicist hacker. <laughs> yes, finally. So I now it all makes sense. Thought about it. Alright, guys, so this is it for today's video. I'm gonna cut it off here. I'm not gonna watch the whole thing. If you, however, want to watch the whole video, you can head over to the channel Closer to Truth and check out the video Are We Living in a Simulation by Andre Linde. So I really have to cut it off here because I cannot bear, I cannot stand this arrogance. In the end, he comes to the conclusion, well, the code must be encoded into our physics and therefore only physicists can decipher the code. They are the new prophets, so to speak. And the creator then has to be a human, of course, that is a physicist. So God is a physicist. That's the only way anything makes sense here, right? No, it couldn't be that God is an all-transcendent being, which is the source of everything that you can perceive. When you think about intelligent people, you think about physicists, their intelligence, what is that? Where does that stem from? If you think of the ocean and then you think about a droplet of water, the droplet of water came from the ocean, right? So the ocean is the origin of that droplet of water. I'm a very simple man, so I give simple examples. Like that your intelligence stems from the creator, which is pure intelligence, pure intellect, pure love, pure transcendence. Every good attribute that you can ever think of is implicit it in this being. He is the first cause to this creation. And if you look at it rationally, it is the only solution because what else is there? Really think about it logically. Let's say he's absolutely right. This universe is a simulation created by a physicist. Let's say he is right, even though this is laughable at best and blasphemous at worst. But let's say he is right. Okay, there was a physicist that created that universe. That physicist found himself, of course, in a physical universe, yet again. So then we have to rewind one more step. Who created that physical universe of that physicist? Huh, by my calculation, it must be another physicist. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, great. Then you have the same scenario again and again and again. And again, and this has been discussed and talked about thousands of years ago. Ibn Sina talked about this, the infinite regress. So therefore, you need a necessary being in order to stop that loop. You cannot have infinite regress because like that you have infinity. 
But at the same time, you propose, of course, that we live in a finite universe which will collapse. And therefore, the only solution, yet again, is a necessary being outside of time and space. It is the only logical, the only rational belief to take. But in this twisted and warped reality, in this twisted time that we live in, the religious people are the crazy ones. And those enlightened, super smart scientists, they hold the truth, even though they cannot even create a fly, even though they cannot explain anything but make assumptions. They can tell you about oh, potentially a multiverse, potentially God is a physicist, you have no knowledge whatsoever. All you're doing is stalling, basically. You're telling us science is the holy grail, but at the same time, you're telling us, oh, well, we don't know it yet, but hey, just wait, just wait. We're gonna have answers soon. Just wait for our answers. We already have our answer. We have revelation from thousands of years ago, which gave us a congruent, logical worldview. There is one creator that is transcendent of all time and space, he created this creation. Everything within creation has a creator, and therefore creation must have one too. If you believe in cause and effect, you need a first cause. What is the first cause? Naturally, it is God. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Absolutely frustrating. Anyways, if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all, much love and peace.